Okay, <laughs> what is up, guys? It's Adrian from ACAnatomy.com. Um, so I uh, thought I share this tutorial of a human skull. So I recorded this previously. Now this is a voiceover because I couldn't yeah, uh, like share my audio while I was um, sculpting this. So yeah, I'm using ZBrush 2020. 1.4 I I know now there's a new version that came out I believe it was 2021 which I was very excited to use also probably in my upcoming tutorials we'll be say we'll be sharing the new features that it has so yeah so I I, I got my base mesh which I sculpted long ago of a male skull. Now this is a uh, I'm using clay build-up brush just to define those forms, just to figure out where our shapes are uh, laying. As you as you can see, like on the side of the screen, I have um, my reference over there. I'm using pure ref. A very very fantastic um, application to have for reference so I, I have tons of reference of real specimens um, of cadaver I'm sure you, you can also grab these online for free just you, you need to, to search around probably like um, human skull cadaver somewhere there Somewhere around those lines. So it, um, I prefer like using real specimens as reference. By that way, I can get as much closer to realism as possible. Uh, besides those um, sketches and so forth. So yeah, um, I'm still trying to figure out where to. The placement, the, um, the structure. So um, I'm still on Dynamesh. I hardly use um, Sculptures Pro, which is also a fantastic tool you can use. But in in, in this project, I just use Dynamesh, and it works well for me. So <laughs> gets me there. As you can see, my resolution it's not that high yet. Um, I'm around 600 pixels and so forth, which is not too high. And my mesh is around 700 polygons. So coming in with the clay build-up, yes, I I, hold, I I use this brush a lot, like 80. 80% of, of, of my sculpting process um, I'm on this brush so as you can see like uh, at the bottom of, of the screen um, uh, uh, I assigned like my, my brushes I normally use uh, my standard clay build up clay they mean standard trim dynamic print and so forth so these are the brushes I normally use and I believe for this entire tutorial we're going to be using this brush these brushes over here which is very 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 handy but then you can use a any brush you which works well for you but for me this these ones work very very well so yeah let's start um, working on the mastoid process very very famous um, landmark and a attachment of many muscles one of which is the stenocladomastoid mastoris so I'm building that with my um, clay builder brush my intensity is not that high it's around 13 so it's uh, very 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 wise to just um, Take it 
easy like don't rush into high details or anything but firstly focus on forms those basic those basic shapes trust me once you have those applying those um, skin textures uh, those fine details I mean makes it very very easy on a, a very clean mesh so right now I spend much time um, on my primary forms I spend a lot of time over there so I'm searching my reference Maybe we might work on the, the bottom there, the skull. So there's those foramens over there lying there. Yeah, which of which are, um, I'm, I'm focusing on those. Um, so just uh, take your time. So um, what I'm doing now is um, I'm using out just to dig in over there. Um, and I'm also using like Z add. So it's very important for you guys to. Just keep on focusing on click yeah just take your time. Just setting up my quick save over there. <laughs> so we have a, a, a few foramens there. So the occipital bone it's I'm trying to figure out the way it ends, way it connects also. So this is um, I recorded everything, so you you also might see me making those mistakes and trying to troubleshoot <laughs> in most cases so I, I told you it will be very very fair to share everything so I sometimes just record those time lapse um because in most cases I, I don't have time to um to share my screen or talk or or any so um I'm figuring out those for Raymond's um Working on the occipital bone. Normally, for for um, for doing holes, I I use just just um, clear build up with um, Z sub and then dynamic so just to fix the topology I I, I first like dig in and, and then dynamic dig in dynamic dig in and then sometimes smooth it out but I I, I hardly like use a smooth brush because it it kind it, it kind of just like ruins my forms while I, I still like trying to figure out what um, how am, am I gonna find those shapes and 
those marks also so in the occipital bone there's tons of foramens there and canals the the most big one there I think we also gonna go through it. It's um, foramen magnum and those jugular foramen also. So it's very important to to also understand where these bones meet, like the temporal bone and the occipital bone where they meet where you where you will find your sutures sutures are uh, which connect two bones so I'm digging the, the carotid canal as you can see I'm using the same technique throughout and I, I, I don't think you need like many brushes to to come to to conclusion it's it's like figuring out which brushes work well for you which brushes um you work well with and then from there just take it from there So it's um, it's very Im important to figure out yourself first before uh, attempting to sculpt. Just practice uh, more those forms. Just spend time in um, figuring out those forms. As you can see, my resolution is still the same. So um, I'm not planning on adding any resolutions in in this current time. So it's always wise just to stay as low raised as possible that's very 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 important so we have our vomer there underneath so these, these bones are very very crucial for it's sometimes hard to to figure out because some of our um, our cranial bones and our facial bones they they stick out over there. So as you can see, I'm digging in, still using the clay puller brush, just coming in there. So you you hardly like see me changing from um, Z add and Z sub. So what I'm doing, I'm just holding them out when I wanna <coughs> uh, I wanna switch between those two. It makes that very very easy. And even for my brushes there uh, underneath, I hardly go down there. Sometimes I do if I <laughs> I don't know <laughs> like if you. Like lazy, I don't know. <laughs> but then um, I've assigned like hot keys to all to like all my brushes. So in that way, it speeds up my workflow very, very, very significantly. A lot, a lot. Trust me. So I uh, believe to uh, assign a hot key. It's uh, you hold down Control and Alt, I think. Yeah, somewhere there. So it control out click and then it to show you uh, and then you choose which um, shortcut you want to assign. That's very 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 handy also. So I, 
and I hardly spend time like in in one place so to just yeah you know, just try to move around just to freshen up your mind once you um, you've seen that okay now there's you you need to like figure out something else like like some other um, location or so forth and uh, I would also like advise you guys to probably like spend let's say a week firstly like studying the human scars just studying the all the bones all the the sutures the, the foramen etc um, just figuring out um, where they are the forms figuring out the uh, I could say the names but they their names are not like entirely important but for me um, I, I I believe like studying their names I I sometimes like it, it helped it helped me to remember the position where where each um, landmark or or any bone like it's um, the structure where it's um, laying um, so it's it's like it's quite handy sometimes but like for for some people they 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 don't need to study like names because they just they, they can just memorize the position of every bone and stuff so it's entirely up to you but on in my point of view just spend around just study the name just um because there's not like much names there there are like like on on your first take it's it's quite hard to memorize all these names i, I sometimes also like forget most of these names but then it also helps for me to remember so digging there my incisive fossa just coming in there so it's still symmetrical because I haven't gotten those shapes yet but then once I, I have all those shapes and forms in place then I, I, I can turn off my symmetry but for now everything is symmetrical but in most cases I, I turn off my symmetry in some areas where I see it fit in the beginning of, of, of the stages but then I start up with symmetry and then once I am happy with all the shapes and then getting to skin detail to to the fine details I mean sorry it's easier for me to uh, to just come in and refine where I can because I already have those those forms those shapes in place this is very very easy so um uh, those um, those lines you you normally see me making it's it's all those uh, bony landmarks, all those um, all, all all those details. So my 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 main focus is to capture as much detail as I possibly can. Obviously, uh, it's it's impossible just to to capture every detail that's that's very very impossible um, unless you, you can spend like years in, in in one position just probably like let, let's let's say for example you, you're spending like your entire year just sculpting the occipital bone then probably you might but then it's it it's all about going as close as possible as very very like very very close as possible to 
to your reference and again I, I, I advise you guys to to look at cadaver I strongly advise you guys yeah just google search and then uh, you'll probably find something um, detailing our protuberance and I'm still like doing those subtle details um, I'm still like moving slowly those very very subtle details so we we have our ear there external acoustic me yet Internal acoustic mediatus. Some of these words are very hard to pronounce. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's that whole that we all hear with. So even inside there, there's small bones that help, like, like capture those sound waves and then opposed to here working on our master process the temporal bone I'm sure you you guys are, are, are noticing yeah that um, I'm still like using one brush again and I haven't changed anything and it, it's, it's very like important to, to switch into your reference just yeah just change your see like which works it's coming in there ever so slightly having dynamite it's it's very very easy for everything so you don't need to worry uh, about your topology and and if you move your mesh to too harsh or anything or so forth it's even easier so I still need to fix my stylus poses, that, that, that pointy bone there. So we, we're still like in the beginning of, of the stage. As you guys can see my reference which I've gathered throughout uh, I'm trying to look for um, okay I found it okay so I prefer like looking at real skulls when I'm when I'm sculpting
it helps me a lot so moving around uh, optic canal I'm trying to dig that and emphasize that. Oh, optic canal. And over there we we have our op superior orbital fissure. So if we have superior, we also have inferior. in most cases <laughs> so uh, I'm still working on the superior occipital orbital fissure skis sorry I must say this takes time but then it's it's all about patience and it, it's all about studying what you um, like if you if you want to uh, achieve like close to realism if you want to achieve something that is more realistic it's um, it's very very important to invest your time in this it's like a piece that is was like rushed over you you can actually see it like from far like the, no this is um, like when I when I go back to my art, I I feel like I I I I, I need to start all over again, like all the time, cause it, it's like um, I see all those mistakes, I self-critic myself, and it's <laughs> and yeah, I'm sure you guys have, have also noticed that. So it's yeah, it's all about spending much time and just in yeah, just enjoy more time. So here's our inferior orbital fissure and our superior orbital fissure. As you can see, I've moved and now I'm, I'm working on the temporal bone again. So wherever, like I laid my eye on on some point I'm like okay I, I need to fix this very very quickly and, and then I come back to uh, another position also so I, I believe sculpting is, it's a technique that you develop uh, along the years like it's it's like figuring out yourself what works for you what um, works best for you so the the only way to to like study I, I, I believe the the like you actually studying when you actually practicing it's not just watching tutorials or or reading the textbook but then once you open up ZBrush or, or any sculpting medium um, like like once you go in there that's when you're studying once you're actually doing something once you start working on, on your first project that's when you're actually studying so yeah I'm looking for face fat back face masking Auto masking. So, so when I'm sculpting, I I won't grab the mesh that is at the back. Those faces facing the back, as you guys can see. So 
so it's I think it it's been like two months with without using ZBrush and I kind of like forgotten all those um the the in the in the interface but then I don't think you can forget like everything but then some of those those options you hardly use you can just uh, it just I don't know it, it, it like takes time to bring it back it's like okay but then once like you spend like let's say 10 minutes or so it it, it all like comes back to you it's like just yeah just spend more time and and, and, and then everything will just come back Again, I'm still on my. Um, I'm still using the tape builder. And the, the thing I like about, about ZBrush is you don't need like a heavy machine to start sculpting. Cause I, my machine is it's not that heavy or or powerful. Uh, I think it's a 16. Yeah, it's a 16 gigabytes of RAM and a very old processor. My graphics card it's very very low. Uh, I think it's Quadro FX on on this machine over here. So it's um it's a very very small machine, but um you can achieve like high high resolution with just i don't know because the features of AI, i don't know which like how they do it but then they this this uh program can handle like tons of like like millions of polygons with without any issues so and there's this um great feature also we we also going to use uh, a bit later when we going to be adding those um, fine details HD geometry so uh, I normally use that just to to work very very easier because I don't have um, a powerful machine to, to handle like those millions or billions of polygons I've never reached like billions of polygons before because I I doubt you like need it. I don't know, but it, it depends on the, the complexity of your of your piece. I I think the the highest polygons I have ever reached was um around three hundred thousand. Uh, wait, it was yeah three hundred thousand three yeah three hundred thousand. No, 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 uh, I'm mistaken. It was 300 million polygons, yeah. It was close there. That was like the highest I've ever reached. And it was like a full character, um, a male character. And I was adding those um, skin pores and, and so forth. working on um, in inferior orbital fissure like uh, until I'm happy with the with the shape then I, I switch but I, I sometimes like also go back to where I, I also live because where I never like you like zoom out and then come back you, 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 you just like see all those mistakes and wherever you can fix also so uh, I'm also planning to re retap all this um, <coughs> the skull so we're still gonna project so we're still gonna re retap all project and then um, sculpt again but I, I think for this we 
we're gonna use zero measure which works but um, it, it depends like what you want to use it for like for for the face like if you're doing like a character face or any creature face I'm not like if you're doing like for animation so it's it's um, sometimes very very wise to just do it by hand <coughs> excuse me just to get that um, accuracy and so it's very very important also working on maxilla maxilla bone as you can see my my hand it's very very subtle it's it's like I'm hardly doing anything but then I'm building very very soft those um those those shapes very very soft and working on our lacrimal bone <laughs> just building that up Over there, we also gonna have our lacrimal silus, silicus. And our next little lacrimal canal, which I'm trying to figure out the way, the shape and So all these for Ravens you you will be having like those nerves going through and so forth. So it's it's very very important to know where where they are and um, and to not miss any any like for or any canal. So it's uh, very very important to study first before you start sculpting. So like once you're very very confident with the uh, with your uh, anatomy, then come in and start sculpting. and use as much reference as you can I'll mix it up on So if you spend like more time with these um, with these primary forms with um, the first shapes, you you won't have any problems when you when we adding those fine details. Okay, I found that option. <laughs> Big face masking. Now it, it won't pull like eight, every faces. Even faces there and they're not facing or oh, normal. Such a handy feature. I, I, I believe like there's there's like tons of features over here and I I normally like use <laughs> those regular ones. I I haven't like spent time to 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 like study which 
which featured as what and and I've seen like many tutorials like like guys have have like figured out how to like those <laughs> like they 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 um they are like people who like spend time to to uh, to master each and every new feature and it's very very incredible so big uh, yeah like big up to them because i i hardly like get time to to know all these features So it's very important to know the, the program, but I, I, I believe um, the most important thing is to know what you're doing first. It's to, if you if you sculpting a, 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 a creature, you need to know the uh, the, the uh, anatomy first. You you can't just come in there because you you know the program and then you're just coming in it's like like uh, nothing will like fall into place it's it's not like magic you you need to study first you need to spend time um, with all these resources that are out there so spend time in the proportion spend time the landmarks, the, the insertions, the origins, um, the functions sometimes they also help but then just spend time with the shapes, the, the forms of the muscles, just structure, just uh, yeah before you, you just come in there. So uh, uh, in my opinion like the fundamental for for like every artist, if you whether you want to be like a a creature artist or a character artist or you, it's a must. You need to know the anatomy. You you need to know the anatomy. It's it it's it's like something I've also avoided, like tried to uh, avoid, but then it it just came back to me. It's like um uh. I've been trying to scout but then my 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 pieces they don't make sense they 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 just don't add up so it's like one day I I just realized that oh, okay the anatomy is missing it's the proportions are wrong, uh, totally wrong the shapes are totally wrong so that is a must it is a must it, it's like the fundamental like you can go like to I don't know if like all art schools but then it's it's a subject that is emphasized because it's it's like when you're building a, a house so your your foundation is the anatomy like if you're building a character um, far past those those um, skin details your clothing or so forth for past all that so the beneath um, you can just see like if the the character it is missing those landmarks you can just see it so it's very important to that you guys just give your time to this just just study just give your time to this Yeah, like trust me, you will never regret this. You will never regret. So on my personal choice, I, I just went deep with the anatomy. I I just um, gave it all. Just that um, I I was I, like just fascinated of the amount of detail there. What well, like what is lying underneath i was i was so eager to learn even more so yeah it depends like how far you want to go with it so uh, i'm not saying take my route but then it's 
you need to know it. That's one thing you can't avoid. <laughs> Okay, so um, so uh, I'm sure you guys can see that we have a lot of work to to do over here. A lot of work to do over here. So I'm still using clay build up. I think this is my favorite brush. It it likes um it it makes me feel like I'm sculpting like it it has that feeling. I don't know how it was made but then it it has that feeling. It it like feels real, it doesn't feel like digital, it's way past that. So I've tried like a few sculpting programs. I believe when I first started, I I first started in uh, I believe Cinema 4D or something. One of my first sculpts, uh, I even deleted. So it was very very hard. Like I I I, I spent like much time avoiding to learn ZBrush because. Like if you search like online, everyone is like complaining like uh, about the interface and how it's very very hard to 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 learn it. So I was like kind of afraid, <laughs> if I may say. <laughs> but then like when like once you just come in, just do it, just um, stop. Um, listening to people just yeah you know, you're gonna come right so eventually i switched to zbrush and then i never regretted that day because it makes like everything very very easy everything is very very easy We have our foramen in there and our notch. So, how I remember this um, when I was studying. So, a uh, notch, it's like, it's it's not a hole, but a foramen, a, a, a foramen is a, a hole. So, uh, a, a notch, I, I don't know how to explain it, but then it's like a, a uh, Indian curve in a bone our oh, supra orbital notch and our supra orbital foramen supra because it, uh, it's above so we have our inferior orbital foramen also which we uh, I think we went past that it's it's in our um, maxilla bone and our inferior in and our superior orbital for, foramen is in our, our frontal bone So I, I just increase the size of my brush because uh, I like normally like in uh, in a skull the uh, frontal bone is it's not like bumpy or anything it's a bit smooth so uh, I'm trying to replicate all also that. So we, we are very privileged because the internet nowadays has 
we don't need to to like struggle with uh, finding real skulls or real bones or um, there's tons of dissections which I s I spent time studying that and even some of the reference I'm using here were from the dissection videos. from real skeletons and and yeah <laughs> just saving it up so uh, I'm planning to record like a, a tutorial for the in, entire skeleton because I, I I've been searching online and, and it's very very hard to 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 like find find that tutorial that will explain everything and even myself I can't teach so I I just prefer like sharing my screen and 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 you guys m might also see like how I work or or how I troubleshoot because this is all like live almost live pre-recorded but then um i never like edit anything so i like recorded my entire screen and everything is there so you m might see me freeze once and stop and just trying to think where what to do so this is part two i've i've done my retopper so i i use like I couldn't record my my uh, my process. I so it was kind of basic. I I use a zero measure, and there's a fantastic brush, the zero measure guide brush. So I drew like guides uh, around the um, uh, 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 around the occipital section, so like the eyes where I, I wanted like loops going there that's all and yeah I'm um, doing my UVs like basic UVs just to we we might like get something quickly so uh, I'm, a, uh, I'm a bit lazy to leave ZBrush and export and, and so forth so I'm just doing my UVs there. Yeah. So the um, you you can actually get like nice UVs over here, but it depends like how, how much of time you you you, you spend. So I I normally like use this um, this painting option, the enable painting control control, control painting. So. I think the 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 blue one I attract seams and the red one um they won't be seams over there so it's quite handy I must say once that is done I flatten just to to see how it looks uh nothing um <laughs> nothing fancy. Yeah, there you can see my seams. So nothing fancy. So if I I'm not happy, I just come back and then add more cuts. So I can get something more flatter and then I unwrap again. And what I also noticed about ZBrush, it's 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 quite amazing because um, I've tried to I, I I believe once I was doing like a face with um, I, I I was using HD geometry and texturing X Y Z so I was trying to unwrap that face it it, it had like it had like seven million polygons and I I 
I tried like many softwares to unwrap that uh, and it it was like fairly impossible but then when I took it back to <laughs> to ZBrush I, I was so amazed and it, 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 it like never had any problems or any it, it didn't like even freeze or anything so it can handle yes it sounds like tons of polygons even when you unwrapping go back to our reference with on the mandible So my workflow is I, I first start with the shapes and then after I'm done with the shapes and then I I retype all oh zero mesh same almost the same thing and then I after I re, I done my retype all and then I I do my UVs but if it's if it's for if it if it's like not like a personal project I. I do my UVs by hand so I do my UVs and then bring it back and then project all the details to my base mesh with the uh, clean topology so by then I, 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 I can continue with the regular subdivisions and just subdivide and what I like like if I'm I'm gonna be using like HD geometry what I like also is to uh, it it, it it doesn't like destroy your your UVs or or anything but then it keeps them so you don't need to to go through all the process all over again and and, and like splitting up your model it, it it's like takes i don't know so you need to refine all your UVs all over again Just fixing those shapes, looking at reference, using move to poly to polygon, to and then back to my clay build up. I really, really hope this is um is helpful for some of you guys. Cause I don't know if it is anyway. I just uh, probably it is. I'm not sure. You can just give me a thumbs up. I don't know. So uh, I can continue to make these. If this was helpful to anyone. As you can see, I've gathered a lot, lot of reference, which like makes life very, very easier. So like, once I, I'm like sculpting, it, um, I don't need to go back and forth then. Just moving that in. <laughs> I think it's it's very important to to be never satisfied with your with your piece. Just like self criticize yourself. <laughs> if I may put it that way, like self critic. It's it's like um you look for for like any mistake any mistake in your piece before people criticize you you f you must first criticize yourself just never be satisfied N never say no this is done i don't believe any sculptor is finished it's like once you open it again you you like see all those mistakes piling up you like want to revisit every every time so it's 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 all about judging yourself first and yeah you come right
so as you can see uh, I'm using the, the move brush just to get those shapes and PRF is very very handy there Uh, mandibular for Raymond Just figure it out also and Then switching reference Just see which um reference I, I can use so and the the cool trick also is to like let's say you you've you've got it like your reference from <clears throat> from tons of resources from various resources and you you have like your scan data so forth just just label your the the landmark just label the the features and like it also helps you to while you looking at your reference you also studying the names also so it works on like both so it's it it also helps me so if you can notice like in in most of my reference there is there's also like labels like stating what's the name of this for Raymond what's the, what's the name of this bone it helps me to remember like while I'm also sculpting I'm also studying I'm also seeing the names I'm also seeing the forms I'm also trying to figure out um, how these forms work so it's it works on both so I can I can also advise you guys to um, to try that also my teeth yeah or so oh, my bottom teeth um. coming into my clay build up just going uh, around those teeth was looking at reference also. So if you spend time like focusing on on those shapes, those minor shapes that that we tend to like to ignore, it. I think those um. If you miss those shapes, no matter if your your piece has much details or high resolution textures, if that is missing, if that is not there, it's like <laughs> you can't sell it. It's it's like it, it's like rushed through. It's it's I don't know. It's um it doesn't sell it. So the just trying to avoid rushing through it and spending your time there so I, I just turned um, transparency so I can so I can come in and and dig in there where my teeth will go so to create those holes so like um, creating holes it's uh, it's not an issue with dynamic it's, it's like it's like seconds because you don't worry about topology, you don't worry about anything because we're still in Dynamish. 
and again you can use sculptures pro depends which one works for you it's entirely up to you and i also normally work on zbrush core um i believe there's the yeah there there are some tutorials that were 100 percent done in zbrush core so for like some of you who cannot afford zbrush um just yeah just um purchase probably zbrush core which is i believe nine point something dollars which is not that expensive uh, it's it's the cheapest um it's very very cheap and you you can achieve like high like high details also you can achieve like nice pieces it's entirely up to you and i i also saw this um zbrush core mini which i haven't tried myself i think i have but then i i didn't finish any piece which is completely free but not for commercial use i believe so it's like if you if you like starting and you don't have money or anything you but you you just want to learn sculpting you can follow along in this tutorial with like using the free Z, like zbrush just because like there's also I, I i think they also have like dynamesh there so if you've got like dynamesh then you sort it you completely sort it So yeah, we're going transparency again. So these teeth, um, I, I'm still gonna fix them. Um, it was um, I sculpted these long ago, like um, base mesh. So. I still need to fix them also. I think like it's the the thing that that, that took more time when I was sculpting this like the, the skeleton. Uh, when like sculpting the, the skeleton, the, I think that takes more time to right, sculpt because it's much complex and then the like, like the entire body. There's too many landmarks. There's too many shapes. There's too many. It's it's like crazy. You know, it's like crazy, insane. So. Once you figure out the skull, once you you're a pro in that, it's that's gonna be very easy for you. That's gonna be very easy for you to finish the entire skeleton. Like when I first started, also I. I tend to I I said I even said to myself that I, I'm never gonna do a skeleton in my entire life. I'm never gonna go through such misery. But then it's like something you cannot avoid because um, how can you sculpt the surface but then ignoring what's underneath? How can how can you how can you know where to place your sternocleidomyist or your one of your neck muscles where where you're gonna place them where you don't know where they are, they are attach attach or where they insert or where they originate from where how how you're gonna do it it's like it's avoiding something that you truly need to finish your piece so I even say to myself okay this I cannot cause cause, cause like seeing all these bones all these bones I have to go through it's like oh no this, this is gonna take forever but then once you done with your skeleton you know that okay once sculpting characters it's it's it it, it, it gets very very easy for you it's it, it's it, it doesn't take long anymore 
and you don't struggle trying to figure out where 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 do I place this um, where does this go if the if the hand is flexing or extending how's the shape how how's the form it's like it, it all comes together it all comes together Yes, it's all this tutorial has gone for so long not as I anticipated I'm hardly like <laughs> narrating over this anymore I'm just talking but um, I'm sure you guys can see I, I, I'm, I'm trying to come in from the side just to create those shapes and forms around the, the teeth so it can actually feel like it's, it's going in Yeah, uh, as you can see, I went to a problem there. I went too close. But one of those things are easy to fix, just uh, like having your inflate and then your pinch brush. You, you can flick, fix those holes very, very easy. Switching reference again. I'm, I'm sure you guys are like asking yourself, how can you use such um, reference? Because like if you if you like rushing through reference, you um, you like neglect or underestimate any reference. Like this cannot be used. But if you you like look very closely, like spend time, look closely, it's it's very very important because it's the the are shapes that you need over there they are shapes which are realistic because um, these are real bones so just pick what you need and just take it from there oh, I made a mistake I'm um, switching my I have to switch to my mandible And I'm sure you 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 also noticing that I I I haven't upped my resolution as yet. So I normally keep it um, fairly as low as possible. So because I know I'm still gonna lose some of the details, so it's pointless to spend time uh, working on details while you you still on dynamic because you're still gonna zero mesh and reproject all over again. So it's it's very important just to um, just to keep it as low as possible. That's very important. Move to the logical brush. Yes, I I use that brush a lot also. It like it like gives me that like freedom. It it makes life very easy. Just saving before you lose our progress. on my teeth again I'm 
There's a lot of work to be done over there. Probably uh, uh, on the second part of the tutorial, we'll be paying like special attention to each of them one by one because it. Um, They're not corrected yet. Switch to my mandible again. So the mandible differs also whether you're doing a female or a male. Male mandibles tend to have that straight straight shaped at the bottom so just you need to be careful of for those also for those experts you need to also consider that and the angle of the mandible in a male it's like much pointy and on a female it's it's uh, it's like a, a bit curvy so it's important to, to keep that in mind also oh you can see our, our projection didn't go as well I need to fix that just smoothing that out just going to my lower subdivision and then smoothing that out it's not like a major issue it's it's like those things you need to be careful of if you're gonna be reprojecting those details and then I just move up one subdivision and then I smooth again and so forth like move after I it's clean and, and then I move up again and then smooth, move up smooth until the, those uh, those artifacts are, are gone completely gone smoothing that out zooming in and Yeah, so once you got that, just, oh, ah. Uh, Occipital condyles have artifacts, I'm sure. So you, you just need to go around your mesh and be careful where you might find those artifacts. And the, and the good thing about ZBrush that you, you can always go down like if you if you're working with subdivisions you can you can also go down to yellow subdivision then fix those those shapes those minor shapes those basic shapes in your role in your low resolution mesh even if you already have your your fine details so it's you always have that freedom to go back and fix your your mistakes. You can see that's a, that's very very bad. A lot of stretching that's going on. But just coming in with a smooth brush. So holding on shift you 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 switch to the smooth right. Yeah that's for beginners.
with my trim brush to to get those flat surfaces it, it does like a very very great job for such Switched on my, turned on my top teeth base mesh. So these are basic teeth. So there's a lot of fixing that needs to be done. It's like a base mesh. I normally I stopped it long ago. So it's like a a, a placement to always start. Working on our palatine bone. On the top to that connected to. So I really really enjoy working on a low resolution mesh it makes life very easy and I, I, I also advise you guys to also try that also spend more time in low res I don't know how many times I've been repeating myself this it's like in me now I don't know <laughs> forgive me guys but then it's uh Something that is very important. You won't regret that. We are looking at my mesh, looking at proportion. Just going around. We coming to the end of this um, tutorial. So at the very end, I'm gonna share um, my my time lapse. So. It's gonna be a, a, a time lapse so when I'll, I'll be adding those um, fine details and finishing up everything. So you uh, you guys might see like where I where how I, I I done everything from from start to finish.
So if you're looking forward to probably like speed up the process or uh, uh, get your own 3D reference um, and not going to trouble like um, with all these pictures just getting one reference which is 3D these cars all are available for sale in our in, in our online store so I'll share the link in the description also so you don't need to go through all this trouble <laughs> so we've made these assets uh, available for sale and they're quite affordable also so just visit the link and then And then you are. So uh, I'm repeating the same process as, as I was doing for the bottom teeth in the mandible, just taking those holes with. Uh, I'm, I'm using the stand up brush now. Holding down out. So Z sub. So where the, the, the teeth need to go, and then I'll come in and then create that. there for now so in the next part of the tutorial we, we we're gonna be spending more time firstly firstly we gonna be fixing the, the, the teeth specifically uh, like one by one because they kind of messed up they kind of messed up so one by one fixing those teeth and then we're gonna be detailing the entire skull so the cranial, the, the cranium, the, the mandible, the teeth also. So that's that. So we'll stick around. It's it's uh, it's been like close to oh it's it's been like an hour now. So it's quite long. I more than I anticipated. But then it, it it's worth a while. If this is very helpful for you guys, just give me a shout and if you have any questions or any suggestions please just uh post it in the in, in, in the chat or send me an email or anything it's, it's entirely up to you or write like a review on our website on our blog i don't know so but it's it's all entirely up to you Moving that new topological brush. So uh, I, I, my, my, my main focus here, my main goal is to get those shapes and shapes, to get those proportions. It's, it's like, <laughs> to me, like from my understanding, that's the hardest part to get. That's the hardest step to nail takes time and uh, like uh, need you to give it your all just uh yeah you know, it takes time so that's like my my main focus look at reference just faking that that shape also Like it's not like a circle, but it's like almost an oval. I don't know what to call the shape. But yeah, it, it also differs like in each specimen.
poses with that reference also. And the shape of the scar of a female and a male differs, so also study that. It's very important. Switching to reference. I'm sure you you've noticed my perspective is, is off for now. So I normally use fifty or thirty eight. Depends if I'm doing a face or a, a full body. So normally for like faces, like for a, 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 a scar, I use the default 50 uh, for Poland. And then for the entire body, like a skeleton, it's um, only 30, 38, somewhere there. If you can play around, like uh, if you're nailing likeness or anything, it's different. Like uh, in this case, I wasn't nailing any likeness. So yeah, I think we've um, come to an end with um, this part of the tutorial. I thank you very much for your time, patience while you... Because <laughs> I, I, I was hardly teaching or saying anything, so <laughs> I thank you very much for listening and watching. I hope this is very, very helpful for you guys. And again, um, if you want to purchase this, just visit our website, link in the description, uh, leave your comments, share, like, subscribe, whatsoever, just, um, yeah, just, um, just help each other, just any comments, just um, help us also, feedback or so forth, any questions, any help, okay, yeah, thank you guys, signing out, Adrian, bye. Okay, part two. It's fantastic to have you back. Um, to work on those shapes again. It's like I'm never satisfied with um, whatever I do. Okay, so if you're new to this channel, I'm Adrian from S A Anatomy. Um, mostly, it's um, an anime channel, so human and anim an animal with anatomy. For artists, and um, in the later future, we'll be we'll be mostly focusing on for medical and and we are for medical students or <laughs> and professionals. We'll be focusing on the entire body, like complete, complete um, structure. Just going in with those systems. So we were spending more time. Occipital condyles. Uh, I'm working on the occipital bones. I'm working on the condyles now. Just moving around. So, like wherever I'm not like satisfied, I'm like, I, I just come in and then just fix that. It's all about going through, just checking, just looking. Spending more time criticizing yourself, looking at the reference, very very close at 
paying attention to every detail. And yeah. See her coming in there. The Palatine bone. So this is a uh, the male skull. Uh, so I, I won't be showing any like tutorial for the female skull. It's pretty much the same, just the shapes and almost the size. So it's once you get the, the gist of this, it, uh, it's gonna be easy for you to, to, to sculpt like any skull, any gender or so forth. So whether you 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 learn like studying a male or a female, it doesn't actually matter. Just for you to know, because it's it's a human skull. They're pretty much the same. Just those shapes and um, those sizes. But I, I believe we we might go in much depth. In our later tutorials. Going into my reference again. So this section is it's gonna be very quick. Because um, if you followed uh, along from the beginning, we've, um, we 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 started with this, but was very very basic, and uh, we didn't have all these shapes, and we were still in dynamic, but now we we using regular subdivisions. <coughs> So again, it's all about patience, it's all about studying, it's all about um, paying close attention to every detail. So our mandible is uh, still on dynamic. Need to really apologize. Just checking if everything is, uh, is in place before I do any retouch of of course honestly I'm uh, I'm gonna be gonna do that like, mostly some of the details I'm gonna be lost here so I'm just worried uh, about the shapes not the like, details or anything so moving uh, using our move topological brush defining those shapes So have like having your reference on the side, you um, it helps like training your eye. It it's unlike like tracing or some kind of cheating. I I, I hardly use it that because it, it doesn't teach me much. It doesn't train my eye to um, to uh, to pay attention to detail. Um, I lose a lot. I, uh, it, so it's I truly advise it in my honest opinion. I'm sure many can disagree, but then it's <laughs> personal preference. Just have your reference on the side and just um, keep on looking. Train your eye, trying to figure out how everything works. Um, how everything is placed um, that is very important it's 
all about that. So yeah, as you can see, like my 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 reference mini, like say, okay, what kind of reference is this? Well, to me, like it, each and every reference is useful. Um, it's useful for each aspect. So I use it for. To capture those details. So you yeah, spend time getting reference before you attempt. Okay, first thing, step one: study. Um, before sculpting, study. Um, everything. <laughs> everything like from everything. Like study the skull, the proportions, the the shape, the muscles, the uh, um, not the muscles. Sorry, the 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 names. Some. Um, they come in handy sometimes so study that and then get a reference if you if you're not a fan of pictures or anything you you can purchase our models which are 3D models so you can have them on the side while you while you're sculpting is it, it's gonna be quite handy. Even pretty much easier. For you to, um, to to start sculpting, so have that, and then once you have your reference, once you have your knowledge, once you you're ready, then attempt, and then you'll be start learning. That's when you start learning. Unlike flipping pages and, and turning pages, I mean, it's it's like you no, know, it it doesn't end there, like. To me, like in, in my personal opinion, it's to me it's it, that's the hardest way to study. That's like that's the very hard way to study. That's very hard. So yeah, spend time there and then yeah, and then Scott. So uh, until I'm satisfied with, with uh, all the shape, just looking around, and then I will zero mesh it. When I come to a point where I'm, I'm happy with the shapes, and then I zero mesh. Oh, I, I created a copy just just in case we 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 make any problem. We like any mistakes I mean so it's uh, very important to duplicate your your model I think the shortcut is control shift B on a Mac is command shift B um, just duplicate your model and then work on a copy and then um, uh, I'm using my zero mesh guide brush so where I I want to have those um those edge loops like uh, around for Raymond's around um, any notch or holes I'm gonna draw like circles so like it's very important to create these guides um, um, unless you you like you, you're gonna be using this like strictly like strictly like um, your your uh, animation like like you it, it's going for strictly for animation and it's so yeah you, you you might need to to go in by hand in in some point but this works like in I've uh, I've tried it and you can be surprised that like, um, how Zebra can capture this? So turn up your your curve string to 100, and then play around with, with the uh, amount of polygons you need. I I first start with three, just to see which one I get, and then keep uh, adaptive on, and then wait what is there, mesh. Okay, I, I think it's done. Shift F, 
I'm gonna see you, uh, it's not that bad. Um, obviously, we need to smooth in some areas, and over there, we need to smooth out. Smooth out that. See ya. That's, uh, that's not actually that bad for for like quick um, um, retapper. So like once you're happy with your topology, this is high res. If you want low res, you can just. But have your half buttons turned on, turn, turn off uh, that button, and you know half of the polygons you already have. It depends on how much of polygons you, you really need to have. So just say. And, and, and you 